inspiring for me to see how people in San Antonio are so aware of the need to protect their source of drinking water. Most people growing up in the Hunts Point section of the South Bronx didn't even know that there was a river flowing through our community. And if we knew about the Bronx River, we avoided any contact with what had become an open sewer. But in 1998, we joined together and created Hunts Point Riverside Park, the first waterfront park in the South Bronx in 60 years. Creating that park changed how the community saw itself and sparked a movement to restore the river and the people in the communities that it flows through. But it all began here at Hunts Point Riverside Park. Quite a few organizations are working on Bronx River restoration. I think the singular focus of Rocking the Boat's work and perhaps what makes us somewhat different than the others is, is our purpose is really to restore the people of the South Bronx and through that restoration, restore the rivers. Our whole idea is to use real life to teach and to learn through. Okay, so you need to even it out, don't you? We do it all through boats and water. And so we build real wooden boats from scratch. We then teach kids everything they need to know in order to use those boats. From navigation to sailing. These are not things that any of them have ever done in any other aspects of their lives. In my neighborhood, there's drug dealers, there's drug users, there's drug abusers. But there's more liquor stores than there is schools in Hunts Point. And you got hookers up and down the block when you, when you see them. So it's just like, you, you know, it's not a place to raise a, raise a uh, family. You know, rocking the boat, came to my school and they, you know, they offered their program. And I was like, oh, rowing a boat? Okay, that's nothing. I just thought it was rowing boats. So guys get in the ready position. That, that's what you gotta do. So now she puts forward, now you're gonna push forward. Once I got it up in the water, it was like a whole nother world. You don't even recognize Hunts Point from the water. It looks beautiful when you're out in the water. You're more relaxed. When the first, the first time I got in the water, I was relaxed. I was, you know, I was not as hyper as I usually am. I was just, you know, calm. That's when I realized, like, nature to me is just, like, it should be my partner. I got it. All of the science and restoration we do on the Bronx River is run through a filter which asks, is this work dynamic, powerful, medium to do youth development work with middle school and high school age kids? Uh, if it's not, we don't do it. So I'm gonna be very careful pulling this up. We are growing mussels and seaweed, both of which eat nutrients and filter nitrates. We're working with the University of Connecticut and growing what's called Gracilaria, a species of seaweed. And the purpose of these is to treat sewage once it's been released, in this case from the Hunts Point Wastewater Treatment Plant, which releases water far from clean. So you put it down until you don't see the sticky disc. And then put it up very slowly, pull the line up. So who wants to start? We got two calipers, so maybe you can take turns going zero, one, two, three. We are also working with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration to grow the mussels from a 20 by 20 raft with lines hanging down. The mussels are growing along those lines. Oh, look at that. Careful. Yeah. Great. We'd like to get some numbers for what an individual mussel is capable of filtering out of the water and how they grow, depending on what's in the water. And it'll grow mussels and then nothing happens. Right. And then we also have many thousands of mussels on the raft, so we can use some extrapolation techniques to see, well, if one mussel or 100 mussels can do this, maybe 1,000 mussels are able to do this. And if we were to set up multiple rafts, how much could that impact on water quality issues? Have a good life. So we've really learned to become mussel farmers. My wife jokes that we're just getting the muscles to do all the work for us. Um, and she's actually not wrong about that. That's exactly how it works, and that really is what, what green infrastructure is all about. This is my fifth year in rocking a boat, and while my time in rocking a boat, it has changed my perspective on where I want to go. I want to be a law enforcement agent, but for the environment. 
environmental protection, basically, to make sure that you know people are treating nature the way they want to treat a person. Good. From the creation of that one park in Hunts Point has grown the Bronx River Greenway, a necklace of waterfront parks on the Bronx River. Now, people all along the river can work together to restore, preserve, and enjoy this rich natural resource. Are you ready? Go! Today is our 14th annual amazing Bronx River flotilla. Team number one! We had our very first canoe relay race on the Bronx River today. And we had nine teams out raising funds for our work to bring out young people and families on the river this summer. Uh, we raised about $35,000, which is really critical for us to be able to do more and more of this kind of work. The Bronx River Alliance emerged out of the movement to create Hunts Point Riverside Park and led the effort to remove tens of thousands of tires, tons of garbage, and even cars from the Bronx River. The flotilla this year is taking place at Starlight Park, which we're really thrilled about because this is a park that's right in the middle of the Bronx and has always been a critical link in the Bronx River Greenway. We had to go far away to find trees and grass when I was a kid. And now you can go to Starlight Park and see a beautiful soccer field and see trees and see benches. Before it was a park, it was a, like so many others. They were either wastelands, one was a cement plant, there were dumping grounds, but mostly they were forgotten areas of our neighborhood. I never thought that this was going to be possible for our river. And now they're beautiful parks that the community takes care of. So I want to thank you for being a part of this vision and for getting us motivated to keep on and to continuing to make sure that this will be here for our children too. We're so excited because this fall we're breaking ground on River House, which will be the future headquarters for the Bronx River Alliance. We'll finally have our facilities right on the river, so we'll be able to really dramatically expand our programming and educational opportunities right on the river. It'll also be a boathouse and a community educational facility, but it has a very cool green design that we're very proud of. It's gotten a LEED Platinum certification, so it's capturing stormwater, there'll be solar panels on the roof, ground source heat, vines growing up the exterior of the building. We're taking water from the site, water that uh, otherwise would just run right into the river. We capture it in the underground storage tank and then we use that water to supply a lot of the functions in the building. But then these vertical walls are irrigated with rainwater. In hot weather, the water goes in through the roots, evaporates, transpires through the leaves, and it'll create a microclimate. It could reduce the temperature around our building by five degrees or more. And it wouldn't be maybe such a big deal if this was happening in lower Manhattan or in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, or some of these places that have become so very gentrified and very expensive. But the fact that we are devoting this kind of attention to this community, I think is really exciting and totally appropriate. Every day is like a discovery. I come here and I photograph and I find something new. And I feel, you know, like a kid. I like to start from Starlight Park here and take the Greenway and all the way down to Long Island Sound. And as I go through each park, I try to document all the migrating birds that are inhabiting the river. Just this past year, I've seen the biggest increase in biodiversity. The ospreys came, the herons came, the egrets came to the foraging. This is very important. The restoration of the human community around the river is even more important than the biodiversity. They're both important, but they go together. It's a huge effort by lots of different agencies and people that have resulted in what's happening right now. People need to understand that we're no different and people in the suburbs who are preserving that lake, that we're no different than people out west who are preserving the grazing lands who want the open spaces kept open. We're no different. It's just that we are in cement and asphalt, and we're trying to do something out of that.
Nearly half the population of the South Bronx lives below the poverty line, and the unemployment rate is over 25%. As part of an effort to restore our community, we created one of the first green collar job programs in the nation. Face where you're hitting, right? Sustainable South Bronx offers hands-on training to individuals who are looking for a way to find a job and to give something back to the community. I say I'm a tour guide. Vonda, watch how he's doing it. I guide the students through these different projects, like here at New Roots. We're doing the rain garden, but we're actually helping them establish a farm. Last couple of weeks, we planted some raised beds. There's going to be a greenhouse here. What we're going to do is we're going to build a rain garden, which is going to stop the flow of the water, and we're going to catch the water so that the water is able to be absorbed up into the soil and is used for the plants, and that's what we're doing here. To actually be able to do hands-on and be able to help with the labor and stuff like that, that's what's so cool about it for us. That's why like, we're all so excited out here. You can see I sort of drew that, with that being the, the drain inlet. They're very inspiring people. Over the pipe. They didn't necessarily grow up in, you know, greenery. Everything's concrete and runoff, but they want to get engaged in it now, and that's awesome. The challenge after will be finding them gainful employment. Right now, I'm on public assistance, trying to take care of my daughter, trying to make life better for her. She's going to be 16 years old next week, so I'm just trying to make things better. The program does have a job development sector. This is one boundary. This is where we help people with their resumes and workforce development skills. And we do try to match them up with the jobs that are appropriate for their skill level. Oh, another one. Oh, wait, wait. Another right here. All right. Once we graduate, we'll have certifications. Maybe one here, too. It's one thing to know how to do something, but when you're certified, it puts a little more meat in, you know, for you to be able to go to an employer and say, look, this is what I can do. We come into a site and it's a bare lot. And then we leave at the end of the day and they can see the results of what they've done. That sense of pride that they have afterwards, that's the best part for me. And I know that they're gonna pass it on to their families and that's how we change the community. That's right. Well, I'm just happy to know that I'm working now because I haven't worked in over a year. So you want us to bring them to the elevator? Today we're in Brooklyn, and we are applying the coating to the cool roof. We're gonna do this building and two other buildings, which is across the street on Quincy Street. And we start on the other side, and go get some coating now. The reason why we do coating and why it's white, because it acts as an insulator in the winter and keeps the building cool in the summer, which will help people to conserve energy and electricity, and they'll see that it will be a more energy-saving course towards them. Being unemployed was really rough for me. Sustainable South Bronx came about and it just like brightened my world. It allowed me to be able to work and I'm so happy to be on the roof and be, to be able to work. So it's like a blessing, it really is. The Bronx River was what started it all. Then all these other programs grew out of the fact that the river was there, that it was getting clean, that there were federal dollars involved, that everybody was involved. It's not a river, it's hope. And row. It's not a river, it's about a community saying we're here and we want to make ourselves better. On our journey across the country, we have met unlikely pioneers in an unheralded revolution. They come from all walks of life, but each one, in their own way, is taking action to protect rivers and vital sources of drinking water while improving the quality of life in their communities. While their green solutions emerged in response to the water blues of Philadelphia, Portland, San Antonio, and the Bronx, we can draw inspiration from their examples of working with, rather than against nature, to help us create a sustainable water future for our own communities. I'm Majora Carter. <laughs>